Hello viewers, Super GT here, back on Gran Turismo Sport. So the most recent update, 1.11, gave us Monza, a very cool circuit. And one which we've seen many times in Forza Motorsport, produced plenty of carnage, especially at, especially at Turn 1. Let's see how it translates into Gran Turismo Sport. Okay then, coming into the first corner, this is the view of the person behind me, Super GT, you can see me just in front there. I break it a little bit late, but this guy breaks it a little bit late, helps me on into the pack, and I'm across the Astro Turf. It's, it's chaos, basically, yes. Um, so our first start at Monza equals our first destruction derby at Turn 1. The Turn 1 chicane, infamous chicane, really, in, in gaming circles the absolute carnage it produces and uh, this race was certainly no different at all so we're going to use a couple of replay angles here this re uh, this recording seemed to be messed up a little bit you might have seen that at the very start so this is the end of lap five i've got a bit of a penalty there so i started um in about eighth or ninth position got up to fifth pretty much as a result of the chaos on turn one and then stayed there until the pit stops so just one pit stop to do directly in the middle of the race in fact the strategy is fairly simple in this one you just run um, the leanest fuel mixture or just sorry no the opposite of that so you just go full on for power as you can see on the bottom right there and just pit right in the middle of the race there's no need to change that at all so then coming out of the pits behind Spaniard I've gone for the Aston Martin here because this was my first race, I didn't know which is the fastest car around this track. I mean, it's, it's Group 3. The Porsche is normally the best car in this class, or one of the best class, uh, one of the best cars. But anyway, coming around the outside of this Spaniard, around Curva Grande, he's really not going to give me much room at all. Coming into the second chicane, I'm not sure there was much need for that, really. But they come into the second chicane, he's way wide. He's going to get a poor exit. And I've got the drive. The Brit in the British car through into 8th place. It's kind of annoying to have a battle like that because he's going to have to go in the pit lane anyway. So by defending, he's just losing so much time. And he's not really directly battling me because once he pits, he's going to go way back. So anyway, out of uh, Scar no, sorry, Lesmo 2. And then we're going to cross the line here to start lap number 7. So a 10 lap race here. And a couple of these in this video. So you can see there, 8.6 second penalty. And at the end of the race, the penalty just going down as a slow down here in fifth position. The first race was kind of uneventful, apart from the very first corner and the pit stop lap. But there we go. Finished the first race in fifth position. Not too eventful. But you can see there at the top, three Mustangs. So that kind of tells me something. The Mustang, clearly a good car around here. And most of the pack using a Mustang. So I choose the Mustang. You can see there's actually a Corvette on pole this time. But... I'm just going to warm the grid here. I'm a beginner, got it? You know, just just wear them in gently. Just, you know, just don't... Do, just make sure the pack don't expect too much from you. Despite the fact I've qualified 4th out of 20. Probably by fluke. We'll see. Mustang then. Let's see how this car does. And coming into the first corner. Let's see how it goes. I break nicely on time. The Corvette up in the lead goes way wide. And actually it's... Well, I was going to say fairly clean. A bit of contact between second and third. Had to get off the gas. And then the guy in the other Mustang, in the same livery, comes up from, uh, was it fifth or sixth? Straight up into second. You made the most of that. So fair play to him. Then I'm up back up into fourth. As a, result, as a result of all that melee. I wonder if the Corvette in the lead managed to get a penalty or not. Because he's in the lead. I've got a dive bomb by the other Mustang. He's forced the German wide. The Frenchman on the German... And the Brit coming in to have a little play here with the Belgian just in front. This is just like World War II all over again. But then I'm up the inside and I reclaim fourth. And I'm back to where I started. So this is the early phase of the race. The Corvette goes very wide there. Now this is the chance for him to bolt away. There he is. And he's going to actually come under attack from one of the Mustangs as we come up down the hill underneath the old circuit up towards... The Ascari chicane breaking just under that gantry. Clicking the apex very nicely. And now my first impression of this car is that it's very rooted through that chicane. I can get on the throttle very early 
and there's little or no drama on the throttle, which is surprising because it's a Mustang, you'd expect plenty of drama on the exit of corners when you get the throttle down, but it turns out to not be the case. It's actually very, very civilised, and I think that's where I'm actually gaining the time. So, coming through Parabolica at the end of lap number one, we're up to third place. I'm sitting in a good position here, just looking at a battle for the lead, the Corvette back into the lead, but then again, he's getting challenged by the Mustang. The Mustang seems marginally faster in a straight line, although that could be just down to slipstream. That remains to be seen. Into the first corner, break a little late. I'm still just about going to hit the apex. There we are. And then the Belgian just ahead, getting a slightly poor exit. It gives me the initiative here to get into the slipstream. Which way is he going to defend? He's going to defend the left hand side, is he? Yes. He knows that the next chicane is the left hander. He wants the left hand side. It's a good move. I'm on the outside. I can't really do much there. So we're going to get on the brakes nice and early. And try to get something on the exit. You see there, though, just how harsh the penalties are. You really cannot afford to cut that at all. I mean, that's a good thing, I guess. But it's very, very difficult to get that exactly right. To maximise the time and not get the penalty. But we have 1.5 seconds worth of penalty. Luckily, it's a long race. 10 laps, so around about 20 minutes. Or just under 20 minutes. And, yeah, that's plenty of time to uh, rain, uh, reel down that penalty. So it's going to bump draft this guy. So there's no point in blocking because I still have ambitions of trying to win the race here. So if we start blocking on lap two, that kind of tells me that this guy isn't really bothered about winning. He's just happy to settle for second. You know, let's let's go and try and catch up with first place. I'm quite happy to sit in third and for this guy to do the work. You see the slipstream. Let's, have, let's see how much of an effect this has. You see just how much I gain on him. I mean, exactly the same car with the same tune. And coming in, you see just how much of an effect that has really does affect your braking point because you're going in there with maybe five to ten miles an hour more than what you normally would so of course you have to brake a little bit earlier than you normally would so that's gonna catch those out who aren't really aware of that effect crossing the line there we go very close um, attendance by the uh, Mustang, uh, Mustang just behind into the first chicane on the brakes perfectly but then I get nudged behind for, uh, by the German so I'm gonna have to cut in fact, I was just forced to cut because of the extra speed from the bump. And actually, the penalty goes down. There's a way you could manipulate that, you know. If someone nudges you, that's basically a free pass to cut a corner. So, coming through Ascari, not that I'm advocating cutting corners, you know, but that's a way that the game could be manipulated. Um, 1.6 penalty is still there. In second place, now getting hunted down by the Mustang, the Corvette, driven very well on lap 3. You see, he's just extended that gap out to 2.5 seconds into Parabolica. I'm on the outside, not really much use in fighting that on the round outside. Sometimes um, with these long straight circuits, like Monza is, or has long straights, it's a good idea to be behind at the start of the straight and then you just get in the slipstream and get back ahead. This guy doing everything he can to break the toe, make sure I'm not in that slipstream, by going far over to the pit wall. Into turn one then, is it enough to go for a move? I just look for it, he just cuts me off. It's a fair enough defence. I don't think I really could have quite gone for that one without uh, making any contact. So, fair enough. I'm down into third place. It was a good move. At the end of lap number four then, into Parabolica. You see there again, that's the effect that the extra speed has. I just went in there way too hot because of the extra speed from the slipstream. And funnily enough, I got, actually got an extra penalty there, up to five seconds. I'm not really sure how going wide there could have... Well, it didn't really help me in that situation. So, the penalty was a bit off in this instance. But I can see how, if you do go wide there, you could gain time. So, into turn one. Look around the outside. Got in very hot. Way too hot indeed. And I'm like... Actually, the penalty goes down. It's very, very unusual. But, um, get a poor run as a result. Actually, no, it did go up there. 6.3. Fair enough. So... You see there, just one mistake, you go a little bit wide, you have to cut the corner because you've made the mistake, you get a penalty, That it's punishing, it's brutal, but it does teach you, um, you know, you, you learn as a result, you know, not to break too late, not to make that mistake, and then soon enough you'll be uh, driving a lot better, you see there though, I do cut that corner again, and the penalty remains, so then it just goes up a couple of seconds later, up to seven seconds, so I've got to be really careful here, so it's, you need to push, but at the same time, you do need to be very careful. 
and this is another detail, it's a really fine detail here. As I go wide onto the AstroTurf, the car just doesn't quite accelerate as quick as it normally would on the tarmac. That's a really nice detail, I like that. So you can't afford to drive wide onto that tarmac too often, on, sorry, onto the AstroTurf. It just doesn't help your car accelerate at all. That's a really good deterrent actually, to going wide. And they should perhaps do it on the inside of corners as well. Now coming out of the pits, so just alongside this guy, and we're just going to have the inside line. I just cut the corner, really stupid mistake. I just turned in way too early, and the penalty's gone up. And you can see by this time, though, he's gone up to 17 seconds. Absolute nightmare. I've just been driving so inconsistently, just cutting the corners that a little bit too much, and I'm paying the price for it. 17 seconds worth of penalty, which I have to get down. That time there took it pretty much perfectly. That's that's how you want to take the first corner, and unfortunately. You see here by the 10th lap, I've still got 16 seconds worth of penalty, but I am gaining on third. So in a way, I'm just going to kind of forget about the penalty and just pretend that I'm racing uh, without that penalty. So the guy in second, not sure what happened to him, just ghosted out, coming out of that second chicane into Lesmo 1. So we're going through here in third place. Again, running wide. The guy behind me all over the place, smashing into the, uh, the bollard there. And on the exit, again, going a little bit wide, losing a bit of traction. Has come up onto the back straight towards Ascari into the slipstream. Then this guy going very slow, and I'm not sure. I mean, he was just in the middle of the road, I did not know which way to go. Bumped to the back of him, looks like he's on a lean fuel mixture there because he's going very slow on the straight. We're in the same car around the outside, he gets punted on by the German behind, and then through the exit of Ascari. It's a, it's a nice actually piece of driving between the two of us, not making contact at all through there. So I'm into second, I'm really not sure how I can wind down 16, 15 and a half seconds worth of penalty before the end of the race and still finish in second. I don't think it's possible. I had this dilemma in the Supra race that you may have seen earlier this week, but I think this is actually much worse. I only had 0.45 seconds to reduce in that race. So I'm going to just have to slow down here. I could have just crossed the line and taken the penalty, but I'm going to try and wind it down. There we go. Yeah, down into seventh place. That's really disappointing. I was second approaching the line, but then down into seven. If I had just taken the 15 second hit instead, I would have gone down two more positions maybe. But there we go. Ultimately, a disappointing race. I did get a trophy though. I suppose that's the only good side to that race. So a seventh, and that wasn't really as good as it could have been. A little bit too inconsistent around the, around the chicanes, where the track limits are very, very, very harsh. Well, not harsh, but just, you know, strict. You just have to be really on it if you want to win these races and not get penalties. So, third time lucky. Let's see. Starting in sixth position into the first chicane. Let's see how this one goes. So, I just get bumped from behind. Thank you very much. Then it all kicks off. I'm just going to have to cut. There's no way I was going to turn across that guy. So, I'm going to keep sixth position. So, I'm back to where I started. So, it didn't actually turn out to be too bad there. And I didn't get a penalty, luckily enough. I think the game kind of recognised that I was kind of pushed on a little bit. So let's see how this one develops. Winding around Curva Grande into the second chicane. Breaking on the cones. Going in. Any contact? Any lunges from behind? Not quite. I just bump into the Spaniard. I get bumped from behind. Oh, God. And I'm going to get a penalty. So, I mean, fair enough. I did bump him, but I was just. I had a massive bump from behind. It's getting chaotic. The Italian forcing his way through. Absolute brutal move. Just runs me wide onto the AstroTurf. They're coming into Lesmo 2. Go on the inside, it's just not a corner you can really go for a move on unless you're alongside already. Wasn't pleased with that one, I must say. So then, just going to keep the position here, just about 8th position. You see the pack, that's a little behind there, really on my, really hot on my heels. As we come up into the braking zone of Ascari, pushing the car in there, just grinding the apex. A little bit off, if anything, and on the exit. Can we get into the slipstream of the Italian? You see the, the golfing class here between 6th and 7th place. That gap is opening up already, so that is not a good sign. Into the slipstream then, he's gone defensive. Let's see how he takes this one. He's braked a little bit late. When you're on the inside, you just need to take a slightly earlier braking point. It looks like we made contact there. I wasn't sure if we did. I don't think we did. Otherwise, the SR logo would have come up. It didn't. So then, into seventh place. Once again, that gap is very big to the guys ahead. I'm not going to get a helping hand in terms of slipstream. So I'm pretty open here to being slipstream and getting past into turn one. 
lap number two. Another Mustang. Are we going? Oh, he's way, way too late. That is not the way you want to take it. He's going to go flying across. And then I'm going to get punted from behind by the Jaguar. Just your typical Monza first chicane. I have to do an awkward little 360 there. I get a reset. I took so long. Thank you very much for that Spaniard. Down into 16th position. Wow, we have some work to do now. So this race, I suppose, there is a silver lining to get punted. And that is... You have some, you know, you have some work to do. You have some practice of some overtaking. So this is going to be a very different kind of race. So these guys are all over the place. I mean, no wonder that at the back of the pack, if they're going to be punting each other like this. So I'll just actually punt him on a little bit. Get the SR warning into Lesmo 1. Behind the Corvette. The Corvette seems to be a very strong car. It looks like an American takeover. Massive portion of... I don't even know what the hell that was. That's, I think that's one of the reasons why I use counter steer assist. Why well, I used to. I, I don't think I've got it on here. But um, I was using counter steer assist because I'm on the controller. You, you'd get these massive portions of fishtailing, basically. And the car would just violently swerve from one side to the other. And it was just impossible to control on the controller. So that, that was the reason why I was using it. It does make you faster, but just to minimise that. Because I was having a massive lack of enjoyment from just spinning out every two seconds. And... Now that I've got used to the PlayStation controller, I mean, I'm new to the PlayStation 4 controller because I haven't had the PlayStation 4 before this game. So now that I'm used to it, it's, it's okay. So I'm, I'm going to go without that counter steer assist. I've got just about, I think I've got one on trash control at the moment though. This car, despite saying that it was, you know, civilised on the exit of Ascari, it is a little bit, you know, there is a, still a little bit of drama. So that one traction control does help. The Corvette moving back in behind. Just hoping he doesn't go for that punt into turn one. I am in 13th, unlucky for some. But on this instant, taking that one absolutely perfectly. Nailed that first chicane. Taking it beautifully. So we're going to reel ourselves in to the back of this little pack here. Back of a Porsche. And then we have a nice little pack up ahead of that. You see that there's a bit of drama going on. That is going to help me. As this uh, Mercedes, is it? Goes very wide. Or is it a Viper? Couldn't quite tell. Uh, goes very wide, um, a Viper or a Mercedes, yeah. Couldn't quite work that one out, weirdly. Well, the, this is me, you know, I, I'm really crap at sometimes naming cars when I'm trying to commentate and race at the same time. It, it can be difficult. So then coming through Ascari, not quite on the apex as I would have liked. On the exit though, okay, not, not bad through there. Now can we pick up the double slipstream? Into the slipstream of the Porsche, who has just about got a faint bit of slipstream from the guy maybe a hundred meters or so ahead of him so then into the final corner of the lap the Porsche goes way wide so you see there that's the effect you need to break a little bit earlier when you got that slipstream you didn't really make that adjustment so up into the top 10 once again we made our way back here into 10th place as we cross the line to begin the fourth lap we still have four seconds worth of penalty can we make our way back up into sixth place that'll be a good place that's where we started. If I can make myself um, back up into that position, that is a, um, it would confirm that it's a Super GT video for starters. And you know, after that punt, losing a good 10 positions or so, it would be a good finish. So in ninth position, we can actually see sixth position. He's not that far ahead. Through the second chicane, um, a little bit deep into there. I, was, I think I was breaking a little bit too late. You see, as a result, I got a poor exit. Perhaps should have gone defensive. Should have looked behind earlier just to check if I was getting overtaken. Didn't quite do that. The Spaniard up my inside into Lesmo 2. He's got the inside line. And again, he's on the inside line. He needs to break a little bit later, but he doesn't. Doesn't make that adjustment. So then he uh, goes way too wide on the exit. Back into knife position. Right. So now can we gain on this uh, little duo ahead? Going a little bit wide. My racing hasn't been the best, it must be said. And this guy going wide once again. I've got deja vu. I think it's a Mercedes. Onto the back straight before Parabolica. I've got a Spaniard on my tail. I'm going to block the inside line. Move slightly back to the left, give him the car width from the left. And then into the final corner. Once again, we've both gone very wide here. And then this is the end of lap five. So we're both going to dip into the pit lane here. Well, at least I am. I don't know if he is. Let's see if he does. The guy ahead just bails out last second. He doesn't. So this could be crucial. We need to have a good stop here and then a good out lap. But I, I do, I have a way good, I have a way better one. You see these two guys coming out, and I'm ahead of them. So it's eighth position. Last couple of laps 
of the race and of the video, is it possible to get back into our beloved sixth position? Let's see if we can do it. We can see that they're just around the corner, and then at the end of the lap, you see they're not just around the corner, they're just ahead of us. So a lot of time has been gained here. In fact, they're very close now indeed. I think it is the Jaguar, it is indeed. So this Mustang is going to branch off to the right-hand side, dip into the pit lane. That's a free position. I don't have to lose any time behind him. So now, I'm going to tuck into the slipstream of the Jaguar. Was this the Jaguar that punted me off, or was it the Spaniard who's also in a Jaguar? I don't know. I don't quite know. Anyway, going in. I haven't braked too late. Taking a very nice line through there. That's about as much as you want to cut it before you start getting those penalties. Coming into Curva Grande, or sorry, out of it, into the second chicane. Look for the move, try to put him off. Moving left to right, moving across his mirrors, giving him something to think about on this eighth lap of ten. But he hasn't quite bitten yet, he hasn't quite made that mistake. He's driving very well despite being under pressure. Oh, a little bit wide, he moves across into Lesmo 2, I have to bail out. I think, to be fair to him, I think he just got the edge of that curve and it just made him spin I don't think he turned across deliberately I think he just his two two wheels just caught the edge of that curve and it just spun him no worries though I'm up into sixth place can I hold this to the end the gap to fifth is pretty big at the moment over four seconds it's going to be unlikely that I can uh, reel that in within the final two laps so it looks like sixth position is the best we can hope for and they're going into turn one for the ninth time, only one more time remaining after this. The Jaguar goes for the lunge of the century. Is this ping pong or is this racing? I'm not quite sure at the moment. So as a result of that, he uh, gets a very poor exit and I'm back through into sixth. That does show his hand though. He's fully intent on going for those dive bombs. So I definitely have to watch out for that. Not the best line for Ascari. Is it enough? Not quite. He is definitely in the slipstream here. In fact, there's two of them there, so I'm going to have to worry about two people trying to go for those moves. I'm going to block the inside. I'm going to block the inside, or defend the inside. I don't think block is the correct word. I think what I did there was absolutely fine. That's defending. Blocking, I think, is more when you just start swerving like an absolute crazy madman. So on the exit, I'm going to move to the right-hand side. I want the inside line. You can go to the left, mate. There you go. Thank you. So we've got this annoying banner right in the middle. Polyphony Digital, if you're listening, please move it a little bit higher because that is right in my eye line here. Coming into the first corner, the German around the outside, is he going to make that work? No, I get punted by the Jaguar, actually. We both, co we both, as a result of that contact, go on. I slide on this cone, come back across, and, well, as a result of that, I probably, he probably wasn't very happy. In fact, looking behind, he's actually flashing your headlights at me. So he's got the cheek, really, because he kind of pushed me wide at the chicane and then you know that was a total totally honest mistake well not a mistake it was just the cone spanned me I couldn't really do much about it so through the second chicane last time 0.9 laps remaining of fuel we should be okay on that we don't really have to worry about the fuel but we do have to worry about this stupid writing right in the middle of the screen it's so annoying so frustrating to see that and not much else a little bit wider Lesmo too that's a big error you see they're just when you, when you graze two wheels on the edge of the curb, it really can spin you out. I think that's what the Jaguar did a lap or two ago. Um, innocently, he must be said. So then, up into Ascari for the final time. I'm going in the middle of the circuit. I'm going to go defensive here. It's the last lap. I might as well do it. He tries to go around the outside. That's never going to happen. Through Ascari, middle chicane. And then he just, he's just going to go for the move on the exit of the chicane. It's not quite going to happen there. He gets a poor run as a result. So I'm thinking about going defensive once again. Is he going to go for the move? I'm going to go for a semi-defensive line. I just really can't tell. As a result, I break a little bit too late. I haven't made the adjustment. He's up the inside. And then as we come up to the line... Oh, he's just going to bail out. He's just going to bail out. I'm back into sixth position. He must have had a penalty. And then we're going to come across the line. And I just slow down to minimise that penalty. And there we go. We finish in sixth position. Back to where we started. A Mustang there winning the race, Corvette second, and mu another Mustang in third, and actually a Nismo there in fourth position, interestingly. But wow, interesting racing. Monza is really good to see it, really good track to have. It's difficult, you really do have to be on it. 
But there we go, guys. I do hope you enjoyed it. Plenty of Monza carnage. And some good racing in there as well, in some parts. Um, mostly not by me, though. It must be said that that was actually quite a poor performance. But my first three races, uh, lots of learning to do. But there we go, guys. I do hope you enjoyed, as always. Please do smash that like button if you enjoyed. And subscribe. For plenty more GT Sport content, I shall see you in the next one. As always, goodbye.